So this is the six week video that explains what to expect after at the six week point after a total knee replacement. So first and foremost, I want to explain to patients at uh, this meeting that I need to reset some expectations. Knee replacement, it's a hard surgery. You know it, I know it. We've uh, just spent the last six weeks getting to this point. And I want you to think about that uh, perhaps in terms of an ankle fracture. If you broke your ankle six weeks ago, I would have operated on your ankle, put plates and screws in, put you in a cast. Today, I would finally take you out of that cast and let you put some weight in a special boot and you know go easy and so forth. And no one would expect that their ankle would be normal tomorrow, right? The same thing can be said for knee replacement. Uh, you know, in fact, a knee, if you fracture your knee, it's 12 weeks before I let you walk on that knee. So think about all the things that we did. You know, I had to use a hammer and you know, some other stuff you don't want to think about. And uh, you know, that's why the knee is still so swollen and tight and, and so forth. So the first thing I want to remind you is that this is normal. Six weeks, you're not going to be perfect. Not at all. Uh, it's a six month process, so kind of reset those expectations you know, based on fracture work and say to yourself, okay, I'm actually doing pretty well. All right, so that's number one. Number two, hard to sleep. I know, it is miserable sleeping. Uh, there are a few patients that, hey doc, I've been sleeping for a couple weeks, but I would say that they are the lucky ones. Um, the academy says it takes 12 weeks to get sleeping back to normal. However, if you get good motion on my program, generally between week six and week eight, things start to turn around. So you're right on the cusp of that. So just hang in there. You know, let us know about it. We definitely want to hear about it and where you are along that stage. But I want you to know that it's a normal finding. Again, fatigue takes nine to 12 weeks to get your blood count back to normal. So many patients are still somewhat anemic, still fatigued, still wiped out by mid-afternoon. Again, not sleeping. I need a nap. It's, uh, it's still a little discouraging. I get it. But that is normal. So I think knowing that that's normal makes you feel a little better. The leg and the brain have to kind of reconnect. So many patients will have some instability, feeling like occasionally it wants to give way. That's a normal finding as well. So again, take your time. You know, uneven ground is gonna be a little sketchy for many patients. Going upstairs at six weeks, many patients are trying one after the other. But remember, four and a half times your body weight goes through that incision going up. And going down, it's eight times your body weight. So that's why most patients at six weeks are still having trouble doing one after the other and have to use that handrail maybe one at a time. That's a normal finding. You can certainly start trying that if you feel ready and confident, but I wanna let you know where the average patient is at six weeks. The inside of the knee, you know, there's an incision on the front of the knee, right through the front, and on the inside, there's a separate incision. That's how I get around the muscle, get in and do that work. And that's why there's such soreness in the inside part of your knee. In addition, the nerves are starting to heal, so every so often you get those little, those little zingers, electric shocks, uh, like fire ants, some people will tell me. I get it, not comfortable. One of the things we recommend to consider uh, is there's a lidoderm patch. Uh, I believe the company's called Salon Paws. So my, my staff can tell you about it. Uh, you can put that right on the inside of the knee. That may, may help with sleep. Uh, and sensitivity. Other people use, there's a, um, a, like a, a stockinette or a sleeve that you can put up over that so that the sheets don't irritate it as much. But again, it is sensitive in that area, so that is a normal finding. Other people also tell me, hey doc, my knee feels like there's a big vice around it or a big rubber band. Why is that? Well, you're still healing. The first phase, your body makes scar like this, a ton of scar, and it's just trying to keep the incision from splitting open. Now the body says, okay, we, we've made a strong scar. It's 90% strong. Now we're gonna do some housekeeping. We're gonna clean up. We're gonna get rid of all that extra scar and it's slowly gonna turn into this. That's the six month period, right? So while it's doing that, that's a chemical process. So it gives off heat, warm to touch. Patients will tell me it feels like you could, you could fry an egg on it at night, doc. It's so hot, that's normal. So you may still need to ice in the evenings. Those chemicals that are doing the work, they're proteins. Proteins have this crazy uh, uh, magnetic affinity for water molecules. They pull water right out of your blood vessels and into the knee, it makes it swell. When it swells, it feels tight, right? That's why it feels like there's that rubber band around the knee. Those chemicals are all the way down the leg. That's why you'll see swelling in the ankle, you'll see it in the shin and so forth, particularly at the end of the day. Uh, very common and will get better. 
Some patients, uh, if they've got previous um, varicosities, you know, varicose veins uh, or lymphedema, some patients will try to get those, those compression sockings uh, and you can get them at the medical supply store. And that helps push fluid out and makes the leg feel a little better. If you're gonna do that, consider getting the thigh high one to get above the incision rather than the calf high, which kind of digs in right at the bottom of your incision. Uh, also, if you're gonna use those, put them on first thing in the morning because they're just about impossible to put on in the evening once the leg is swollen. So that's another uh, finding. Another thing to talk about uh, is that this is an artificial implant. So there is a risk of getting an infection because there's metal and plastic parts there, particularly when you go to the dentist. So for the first two years, I want you to take some antibiotics prior to your dental cleanings or any other dental work. And we'll do that at the six week visit. If I haven't mentioned it at the six week visit, make sure you, you remind me so I, I send it in. I want it taken care of on your shelf, already ready to go at your next dental visit. I generally tell you to wait 12 weeks for a routine dental visit after surgery. But if you've got a bad tooth, an infection, or a, a broken tooth, you know, get it looked at. Take your medication prior and get it looked at. Let us know. Um, the uh, uh, many patients will ask me, "Hey doc, can I can I drive? Can I uh, start playing golf and doing activities?" I generally tell patients, "Let pain be your guide. If you're driving, you've got to be safe and not hurt anyone else." Um, the uh, uh, knee at this point creates a lot of um, uh, clicking, uh, and so you know, again, you, if you're going to be you know playing sports, uh, you may you may feel that particularly early on. Uh, rolling over in bed, you may hear a little click, and we can show that to you in the office with the parts. I've got some practice parts to show you. So again, we'll talk a little bit about what you can kind of get back to. Some patients are getting on exercise bike a little bit. And again, letting pain be your guide. I guess that's most of the things I wanted to cover at the six week visit. Uh, again, bring your questions in uh, so that we can go over anything specific. Maybe you wanna do yoga, or maybe uh, you wanna go on a trip you're not sure about. Write them down so that uh, we can go over them when you're here in the office. Thank you again.